So I'm Naz Ahmed. Um, I was script and story executive up on Hollyoaks up until quite recently. Um, and I've just started a new job in drama development for Lime. I started on Hollyoaks kind of June 21. And when I got here, this story was actually already on the table in that it hadn't been developed in any shape or form, but it was one that had been talked about at story conferences. Um, and it sat there for quite a long time because we had many conversations about it and the direction we wanted to go in, how we wanted to shape it, what was the messaging around this storyline, you know, what was the angle that we were coming in from. So we had quite a lot of time where we just talked about it and then it really started to take shape where we talked to Channel 4 about it and, you know, kind of different versions of what it could be. And then Tabo and I, who's one of our brilliant writers on Hollyoaks, um, we were about to go into a midterm story conference and we kind of talked about it again in terms of, shall we kind of really pitch this again and let's get going with it if we're going to do it and all that kind of thing. So Tabo and I just jumped on a Zoom and we talked about different chapters within the story that could cross a three to four month period and that started breaking it down kind of, you know, episodically, weekly, monthly, that kind of thing. And that's how it started to take shape. So we went into our next kind of short story conference to cover stories for the next four weeks and we started plotting out the first, the very first chapter of the story. And that's kind of how it came about really. We live in a world right now where, you know, people have lots of views and opinions and they're very kind of influenced by media and press and news and what's out there and everything. And I just really believe that you have to tell those stories with authenticity, but obviously dramatically as well. But it helps the viewers to kind of, you know, understand us better in terms of the worlds we come from, the lives that we li live. And they'll never necessarily be in our skins, but it gives them a real insight into who we are as people, how we fit into society, how we live our lives, how we integrate with other communities. Um, and all of those things are really, really important. I just don't think we should ever shy away from telling stories that some people might find a little bit uncomfortable, because I think we have a responsibility as drama makers to tell those stories. And we have those characters, as you say, that particular family for this storyline in our world. And we can tell those stories truthfully through those characters. So for me, that's really important. It always has been. Once upon a time, many, many years, years ago. <laughs> I don't know, I was that kid who like, I was never really into like playing with toys or anything. I was always about my books and my stories and you know, I, I came from a family where we didn't have like, you know, lots of wealth or anything. And I think I had like three dog-eared storybooks that I would just read over and over again. And I always just kind of had that bug to go out and tell stories. And you know, sometimes life gets in the way and your career goes in a completely different direction. And I stepped away from that ambition for many years, but I always wanted to come back to it. So my first real kind of like feel of this as a career, um, I was working as a PA in quite a, quite a boring job it was in a property firm, so not creative at all. And all I did was book train tickets or plane tickets for my boss, manage his diary, sit there, get bored a lot. He was barely in the office. And I just chanced across this advert by the BBC and they were launching a new radio drama called uh, Silver Street, which was specifically going out on the BBC Asian network, but also for Asian audiences predominantly. And I just saw this advert for a production coordinator role and thought, I don't have any experience, I've not been anywhere near that kind of thing, but I'm gonna throw my hat into the ring and see what happens. So I had an in interview got the job, which was fantastic, and then helped to create this show from scratch. So all the big stories, literally from the very beginning, blank canvas, we created the characters, we created the world, and it was everything I wanted to do and telling stories too. And I think it was within like three or four years of like doing the production coordinator role, I started producing and directing and I was very involved in casting and yeah, it was fantastic. And then inevitably, as often happens, you know, the BBC had to make a decision about cuts and things. That was many, many years ago. 
and unfortunately the show went and I was gutted because we were just starting to like peak in my opinion. Um, so then there was that journey of, right, how do you go from radio to telly but still do all the things that you love to do? And it was tricky, you know, because like, even though you have that transferable skill set and it's still stories, it's still characters, it's still a world, it's still drama, there was a little bit of a snobbery, for want of a better word, in terms of crossing over from radio to telly. So I was... Um, being a Birmingham girl, you know, and Doctors was just down the road from me. I was kind of banging on the door at Doctors a fair bit just to get some work experience, just to see if I could get anywhere near scripts and editorial. Um, and eventually I uh, did a bit of cover work as a researcher. Then I started as an assistant script editor there, worked my way up to script editor, went off for a little bit and did some storylining at Coronation Street, came back to Doctors with the storylining skill set, and then I was knocking on the doors again, only this time I was like, I've got new skills now, I can do stories and scripts. Um, and so I did a couple of special weeks which were is issue-based, which, you know, kind of ties in with why we're talking about this particular story in Hollyoaks, because those kinds of stories, as I said, are really important to me to tell, but I love working on issue stories where you raise awareness, you talk to people, you challenge people's kind of thought patterns and all of that. So I did a big week on homelessness, I did a big week on mental health, and then I threw in a bit of a Bollywood marriage proposal, um, you know, all sorts of things. So yeah, that's kind of where I've been with it really. So I've worked on EastEnders, Coronation Street twice, Doctors, Hollyoaks, which was fantastic, um, and now I'm working in development. Firstly, no two days are ever the same, which is part of the challenge, but also part of the fun. So I think you come in and you have a little bit of a plan in your head in terms of how your day is going to progress. And there are certain things in soap that are kind of set in stone in terms of a soap cycle. So you know you're going to have a story conference on a particular day every four weeks, every five weeks. Um, you know that you're going to have sets of scripts coming at you where you'll read them and give notes and feedback and certain things are set within a deadline but then outside of that you have all that brilliant time that you create for yourself on top of like you know the busy day to day where you're forward planning and you're thinking about characters that might be missing from the show or stories that you want to tell in the future and you always go out and watch stuff and talk to people and see what's in the news and find your inspirations for telling stories. So yeah, some of it is the day-to-day -day set in stone, creating a soap and getting it on air. And then some of it is just really thinking ahead and forward planning. And that's, that's the fun bit, because you literally get a blank canvas and throw something on it and see where it gets to. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But no two days were ever the same. I'm a Muslim female. I grew up in Birmingham. Um, I'm working class, I'm very proud of it. I feel very inspired in my storytelling by just kind of people's life experiences generally, because I think sometimes life experience gives you the best stories and they're the stories that really talk to your audience. So everywhere I work, I will try and get a little bit of that in. So for example, you know, if I'm working on a show and there's Muslim characters or, or a Muslim family or a combination of the two, I like to do Ramadan stories every year. You know, I like to have something a little bit special on Eid. And we've done that on Hollyoaks in the last year and it's been great. I'll chuck in a bit of Bollywood because I grew up on Bollywood and I love all of that and that's my escapism. Um, and yeah, just like... Things like sitting on a bus, listening to two people having a conversation. I'm very nosy by nature anyway, but often I come away from that bus ride having listened to the conversation about whatever they're talking about and, and a story has like triggered in my head. So yeah, I like to bring a bit of that in. And you know, I think authenticity, truthfulness, stories about community, about how, you know, despite all the challenges that we face in our lives and all the things that we're confronted with, that we're still one society, one community, and everyone's got a personal story to tell. And you never run out of those because life's constantly evolving. So yeah, I try and get a little bit of naz in, in, in stories here and there. And there's been lots of shows over the years that I've worked on where I've definitely created a storyline sort of based on my own life experiences. 
Um, and I think it's good to do that. Yes, absolutely. So I like to see myself as someone who really does try and champion the talent out there. I mean, you know, I spend a lot of time on Twitter, like tweeting about jobs and opportunities and traineeships and where you could be an intern and get your experience. But ultimately what I always say to people is, it's hard, it's a long road. Everyone's gonna have their own individual struggles on that journey. But if you really believe in it and you're passionate about it and you wanna tell stories, just keep going, get to know people, do a lot of networking, knock on doors until your knuckles are sore, if those are the doors that you wanna enter and be on the other side of watch everything, see who's making what, what are the current trends, they change all the time. And, you know, we're, we're in an era where people are very media savvy, social media plays a big part in everything. And also people are making great drama, where they're being very stylistic in terms of their approaches, they're being very bold with characters. And everyone out there is talking about diversity and inclusion and telling us they mean it and they want to see those characters on telly and they want to see those stories. And if you've got those stories to tell and you can come up with those characters, just try really hard to get into those rooms and talk to people and connect with people who you think might help you. Because the opportunities are out there. I know it's frustrating and I know it's really competitive at times, but... You know, I've been on this road for a very long time and I don't regret it. Even when I've had doors closed on me and things have gone a little bit wrong and I've had a few wobbles along the way, I'm just really glad that I persevered. I always tell people to not give up if it's something you really want to do.